All right. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this California Climate Investments webinar on funding and contracting opportunities available to businesses. As you may know, this webinar is part of a series and future webinars as well as recordings of past webinars can be found on the California Climate Investments website under events. Next slide, please. This webinar is in partnership with the High Speed Rail Authority and California Air Resources Board Community Air Protection, or CAP, incentives. Uh, first, we'd like to start with a tribal recognition statement. In recent times, collaboration between tribal nations and the state has grown and fortunately continues to grow. Each era of California's history has brought different atrocities against tribal peoples, including land dispossession, discrimination, cultural impacts, loss of life, to name a few. To this day, many tribes continue to mobilize to preserve their culture and fight for restoration of their rights and lands while forging new roads towards equity and autonomy. This trajectory reminds us that the march towards justice is at times fraught with long chapters of struggle. Tribal nations and all federally recognized and non-recognized indigenous people in California have been sustainably managing lands for generations and are in a unique position to offer insight on ways to protect the environment. We thank the tribes for the knowledge they create and share and will work to uplift their efforts to protect, implement, and build upon traditional ancestral and ecological knowledges, knowledge and practices for the betterment of all California. We invite our audience to engage with the with and interrogate present and potential impacts towards indigenous self-determination and assess what opportunities there are to learn from history and not only integrate, but prioritize following the lead of our tribal neighbors. Further, as you listen to our presentation and think through potential future projects, please consider how you can better incorporate service to tribes, create meaningful partnerships, and ensure that your work pays respect to current tribal members near you. We hope our meeting today and our ongoing efforts with tribal nations will help better incorporate tribal viewpoints and the voices of tribal communities in, decision, in decisions made by the state of California. So here's our agenda for the day. Uh, we have two great speakers lined up and we will have a Q&A uh, session at the end. Um, all PowerPoint slides will be posted on the California Climate Investments website as an ongoing resource. If you would like a copy of the presentation prior to its posting, please do not hesitate to reach out to us via email. Additionally, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted as well. Um, there's a little Q&A guidance. We have three ways to interact with us today. Uh, you can send us a question through the GoToWebinar quest questions function. You can send us a direct message via Twitter at CA Climate Invest or you can email us at info at caclimateinvestments.ca.gov. This information is also available in the handout section on the right side of your screen should you wanna reference it at any point. We encourage you to send in your questions throughout the webinar. We, will also, we also will be speaking to the questions that attendees submitted during the webinar registration process. Uh, so for those who don't know, California Climate Investments is a statewide initiative that puts billions of cap and trade dollars to work reducing greenhouse gas emissions, strengthening the economy, and improving public health and the environment, particularly in disadvantaged communities. California Climate Investments includes over 40 programs working to reach state climate and equity goals with a wide range of project types, including affordable housing, remo renewable energy, public transportation, zero emission vehicles, environmental restoration, sustainable agriculture, recycling, and much more. To date, 55% of California climate investments are made in disadvantaged communities and low-income communities and households, which continues to exceed the statutory minimum of 35%. So before we jump into the funding and contracting opportunities, our speakers and I would like to get to know you a little bit. Uh, about your previous experience with California Climate Investments, as well as your local air districts. We'll be using these responses to inform the Q&A later in the pre, uh, presentation. So please take 30 to 45 seconds to respond to these questions. Uh, so the first question is, have you ever applied for or received funding from a California Climate Investments program? Uh, we have a, a few options there for you.
All right. Um, so it looks like the vast majority of you have not applied. So that's great to see that we're getting a lot of new people interested in California climate investments. Uh, about 16% of you have applied and some about half have received and half have it. So uh, it looks like we got a, a good group here to talk about some uh, opportunities. Um, our second question is, are you familiar with your local air district? Yes, no, or I'm not sure. Give you a, a few seconds to fill that one out as well. All right, just a few more seconds here. All right, so it looks like a, a good majority are familiar with your local air district. Local air districts are, are key in a lot of our programs. A lot of the money either flows through air districts or they're key part of getting permits and things like that. So uh, it's good to see that majority of you are familiar um, and we'll talk a little bit more about local air districts today. Great. Uh, so your best resource for California Climate Investments funding and contracting opportunities is our website. Uh, there you can find program pages for all California Climate Investment programs organized by applicant eligibility. Um, one, you can also go to our website and once there, click Programs and select Businesses to learn about available California Climate Investments programs. We'll go over several funding and contracting opportunities today and provide the slides for your reference following the webinar. Before we jump into the funding and contracting opportunities, I would like to pre preface by saying that the following slides will hold a lot of information in a condensed format. Please do not feel pressure to absorb all this information or take notes on all the little details. Uh, all slides will be posted within two days on the California Climate Investments website listed here under events and webinars. If you require the slide sooner than the posting date, please reach out to our team. You are also welcome to take screenshots. Um, other than that, please take this time to listen to those, these overviews and think about which programs might best suit your needs. So for the first program is the Community Air Protection Incentives, Support Infrastructure Projects, Stationary Source Projects, and Unique Community Identified Projects in AB 617 Selected Communities. Uh, CAP, uh, for short, also provides incentive grants that helps owners of older high-polluting vehicles and equipment replace them with newer models that have lower or zero emissions. The program is administered by local air districts, after which the district will conduct an eligibility uh, analysis before evaluating and selecting funded projects, with funding amounts varying widely across projects. We are joined by a CAP staff person today, Hope Couples, who will further discuss this funding structure. The Community Air Grants Fund pro projects that provide support for California community-based organizations and California tribes. Grants help awardees participate in the AB 617 process and to build capacity to become active partners with government to identify, evaluate, and ultimately reduce air pollution and exposure to harmful emissions in their communities. The current 2021 timeline for the Community Air Grant Program will release the final air grant request for applications on July 2nd, 2021, and the deadline for air grant applications is on October 1st, 2021. For more timeline information, please visit the Community Air Protection program site. The Clean Vehicle Rebate Project, or CVRP, uh, promotes clean vehicle adoption by offering rebates of up to $7,000 for the purchase of or lease of new eligible zero emission vehicles, including electric, plug-in hybrid electric, and fuel cell vehicles. CVRP offers fleet vehicle rebates as well. Businesses are eligible for up to one rebate per lifetime or up to $4,500 per vehicle. 
the hybrid and zero emission truck and bus voucher incentive project, also known as HVIP, provides incentives for clean trucks and, and buses. These are point of sale discounts to power California communities and drive commercial technology transformation. Funding, that H funding for HVIP is anticipated on June 8th, 2021, and applications can submit voucher requests then. There's expected to be high demand upon opening, so please be sure to apply quickly. Clean Mobility Options is a voucher program that provides funding for zero emission car sharing, carpooling or van pooling, bike sharing, scooter sharing, innovative transit services, and ride on demand services in underserved communities. The next round of funding is anticipated for late fall 2021. The Clean Mobility Project can fund up to $1 million to launch and operate a clean mobility project and up to 600,000 towards the expansion of existing projects. We encourage you to sign up for technical assistance as early as possible, as funding is claimed quickly once this opportunity is available. You can sign up for timeline updates, program news, and events on the CMO website. Please see our transit agency's webinar to hear from past grantees of this program. The California High Speed Rail Authority program offers numerous contracting opportunities across a broad spectrum of services and materials and is committed to small businesses playing a major role in building the programs. The small business program implements a small business performance plan to achieve the 30% goal of participation, including disadvantaged business enterprises, DBE, disabled veteran business enterprises, DVBE, and micro businesses or MB. The Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities Program funds land use, housing, transportation, and land pre preservation projects to support infill and compact development that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. AHSC is administered by the Strategic Growth Council and implemented by the California Department of Housing and Community Development. AHSC provides funding for affordable housing developments, both new construction or renovation, and transportation infrastructure with eligible businesses, including housing developers and EV charging and car share providers. As the application deadline is June 8, 2021, SGC program staff can provide application assistance. Please visit the website to view the most up-to-date information as it emerges and to read the guidelines for this round six cycle. The California Low Income Weatherization Program, or LIWIP, uh, for multifamily properties is funded by the California Department of Community Services and Development. Supports owners and residents to lower utility costs, save energy, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions in multifamily properties. Incentives through the LIWIP multifamily program cover approximately 30 to 100% of energy efficiency upgrades and 50 to 100% of solar installations. Applications are accepted on a rolling basis with limited technical assistance throughout the application process. Funding agricultural replacement measures for emission reductions or farmer program is funded through local air districts which administer the farmer program for their region and select projects for funding. Local air districts receive funds based on a formula and award them to farmers and agricultural businesses for individual projects. Farmer provides funding for agricultural harvesting equipment, heavy duty trucks, agricultural pump engines, tractors, and other equipment used in agricultural operations. For more information on how to apply and funding amount, please contact your local air district. The Healthy Soils Program promotes the development of healthy soils on California's farmlands and ranchlands. There is available funding for this program, but it is not currently funded through California Climate Investments. The Healthy Soils Program has two components, the Healthy Soils Incentives Program and the Healthy Soils Demonstration Projects. The Incentives, incentives Program provides financial assist, assistance for implementation of conservation management that improves soil health, sequester carbon, and reduce greenhouse gases emissions. And the 
Healthy Soils Demonstration Project showcased California farmers and ranchers implementation of the healthy soils practices. Applications are anticipated to open fall of 2021. CAL FIRE administers the Forest Health Grant Program, which funds reforestation, forest fuel, forest fuel reduction, pest management, prescribed fire, forest biomass utilization, and conservation easements and or land acquisition through the Forest Legacy Program. Projects must focus on larger, on large landscape scale forest lands, such as watersheds, fire sheds, or larger logical management units. The total project should aim to be no less than 800 acres in size. Landscape units do not have to be continu continuous. The, two, the applications for the forest health and legacy proposals are due by 3 p.m. on May 19th, and the research program proposals are due by 3 p.m. on June 7th. Safe, the safe and affordable funding for equity resilience or safer program is driven by collective responsibility, water systems, nonprofit organizations, governments, and a community advisory board, and other stakeholders work together to develop and implement solutions. SAFER uses a set of tools, funding sources, and regulatory authorities to proactively identify and reach out um, to water systems that are out of compliance to walk them through the SAFER application process and collaborate on short-term and long-term solutions, which are developed with input from the community. Applications are accepted year-round. Uh, a couple more here. Uh, the California Greenhouse Gas Loan Program provides funds to support new and expanded capital investments in infrastructure, such as composting and anaerobic digestion facilities, um, and as well as recycling uh, products that will reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Applications are available on a rolling basis and are first come, first serve. Uh, and the last program we wanted to highlight is the California Climate Investments Technical Assistance Program. While it's not a funding opportunity, technical assistance is important to preparing competitive proposals and applications and provide support that can range from capacity building uh, to implementation assistance. Um, with that, well, here's a, <clears throat> a few opportunities that you can look through uh, to show available grants and funding um, availability. So uh, feel free to browse that once you have some slides. Uh, and here, yeah, so uh, now I'd like to, to uh, we'd like to spend some time talking about the Community Air Protection Incentives, also known as CAP Incentives. CAP is administered through local air districts and funds support infrastructure projects, stationary source projects, and unique community identified projects in AB 617 selected communities. Joining us today is Hope Couples, who will be discussing ways to participate in CAP incentive grants and how to apply. Hope Couples is an air pollution specialist in the Mobile Source Control Division at CARB. Her work is focused on implementing incentive programs that are run by California's local air districts, including the Carl Moyer program and community air protection incentives, which she'll be discussing in more detail today. Uh, so take it away, Hope. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, hope everyone is doing well today. Um, like Ryan said, my name is Hope Couples, and I will be sharing some information today on community air protection incentives and the Carl Moyer program. Uh, I hope this presentation will provide you with some insight on how incentives might be able to assist you and your business. Next slide, please. So to quickly go over what we will be discussing today, uh, I'll first provide an overview and background on community air protection incentives and the Carl Moyer program. Uh, these incentives are implemented by local air districts, so I will then provide some information on what this partnership with CARB looks like. Uh, next, I will cover the eligible project categories that can be funded with CAP incentives. And finally, I'll go through how you can apply for funding and get more information. Next slide, please. So, uh, the focus of today's presentation is community air protection incentives 
also referred to as CAP incentives or AB 617 incentives, um, but all of those names are interchangeable. Uh, CAP incentives were created in 2017 alongside Assembly Bill 617 uh, with the primary goal of improving air quality in communities most impacted by higher pollution burden. About $700 million of funding has been appropriated for CAP incentives since 2017 with another $260 million in proposed funding. So CAP incentive funding comes from the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund. The GGRF is generated by California's cap and trade revenue. Another important aspect of community air protection incentives is that districts select cap incentives projects in consultation with local communities. Um, so this means that cap incentives is focused on environmental justice and priority populations. Um, these groups include disadvantaged communities, low income communities, low income households, and AB 617 communities. Uh, CAP incentive funds can be spent on a wide variety of eligible project categories, um, which I will cover a little bit later in these slides, many of which can hopefully benefit your California business. So next slide, please. So in addition to all of the CAP incentives project categories, which I will cover in a bit, uh, CAP incentives funds can also be spent on any Carl Moyer eligible project as well. This includes anything that qualifies for funding under the Carl Moyer program or Moyer program. Uh, and to better understand what these project categories are, I wanted to provide some background on the Moyer program as well. So the Carl Moyer program was established in 1998 and built from the ground up uh, by the program's namesake, Dr. Carl Moyer. Uh, his picture is on the right side of the screen here. Um, since its establishment, over $1 billion in funding has been given in grants to improve air quality. Uh, the Moyer program includes a range of eligible project categories uh, that must follow a couple main pillars of the program. So first off, the Moyer program is focused on reducing emissions uh, and therefore projects must be cost effective. Uh, cost effectiveness essentially means that grant amounts are limited by the amount of emissions that are reduced. Um, additionally, the program does not pay for compliance, so projects must go above and beyond what is required by law. Uh, in summary, for these two slides, the main thing to take away about CAP incentives and the Moyer program is that CAP incentives funding can be spent on a range of eligible projects, including everything that qualifies for funding under the Moyer program. Next slide, please. So one of the Moyer program and, or one of these incentives, many strengths, is embodied by the partnership uh, between CARB and the air districts. Uh, the partnership is clearly delineated in California statute, which explains the different roles for CARB in the districts. Uh, and essentially this partnership allows for state level resources uh, to be applied at the local level to get the greatest effect. Um, so to start on the left-hand side of the screen, we'll go through CARB's responsibilities. Uh, the legislature allocates funds to these incentives to CARB. Uh, CARB then develops and maintains guidelines that describe the project eligibility and criteria. CARB also manages and disperses the funds to the air districts each year and provides air district oversight and assistance. Uh, and then on the right, the air district responsibilities. Um, so air districts are implementing their programs locally. Uh, they select and fund projects according to their local needs and priorities. Um, they also have additional responsibilities, including conducting vehicle and dismantling inspections, auditing grantees to ensure compliance, um, and they ultimately are the ones entering into contract with the applicants. Next slide, please. So uh, this slide provides a breakdown of the eligible project categories, which will hopefully be the most helpful. Um, on the left here in the gray box, we have um, all of the eligible project categories um, that qualify for funding under the Moyer program. So these projects included on the left are a range of heavy duty vehicles, off-road equipment, including agricultural and construction equipment, lawn and garden equipment. Uh, there's also a car scrap option that provides funding to scrap older polluting vehicles. Um, we also provide funding for marine vehicles and charging infrastructure. And if you could hit next, please. And so in addition to these uh, Moyer eligible project categories, 
cap incentives can also be spent on what is included in the white box here. So these include hexavalent chromium plating facility upgrades. Um, so anything, any upgrades there, as well as reducing air pollution in schools, which includes uh, air filtration systems. Uh, cap incentives can also be spent on uh, community identified projects and stationary source projects. So there are a range of possible stationary sources. Uh, so districts can propose other stationary source projects to address community concerns. Uh, next slide, please. So here are some additional images of eligible project types. Um, you know, there's lawn and garden equipment, infrastructure, there's an ag pump on the top right there, um, just to name a few. Next slide, please. Okay, so how to apply. Um, the best way to learn more about how to apply is to contact your air district, um, since each application process will be district specific. Uh, contacting your district is also the best way to learn about uh, your district's requirements and timelines for applying. District staff can also let you know if there are other opportunities to receive funding for your business. Um, on the left hand side of the screen at the bottom here, I've included the link um, that will take you to a map of California's air districts. Uh, this map includes uh, air district contact information. Next slide, please. So in summary, uh, here are some important things to remember uh, when applying for CAP incentives. So the program is implemented by air districts. So my primary recommendation is to reach out to your local air district to get more information. Um, you can follow the link on the previous slide to get to that map that includes that contact information. Um, a second kind of main point that I wanted to re-highlight is that the goal of CAP incentives is to benefit environmental justice communities and priority populations and address the concerns of the communities. Lastly, the program does not pay for compliance. Um, this is an issue we see occasionally, so I wanted to mention it here. Uh, for the majority of project categories, upgrades to become compliant with regulations cannot be funded. So this kind of goes back to one of the main pillars of the Moyer program. So upgrades must go above and beyond what isn't required by law. Uh, lastly, um, your local air district will be the best place to start. Um, and they can assist you in determining if you qualify for funding and what those next steps would be. So to wrap up here, uh, please feel free to reach out uh, if you have any feedback on our presentation or have any follow-up questions that we did not address today. I would be happy to help. A general email to reach out to our team is ab617incentives at arb.ca.gov. Um, thank you again for your time today. My colleague Kyle Goff will be joining me for the Q&A portion of the presentation, and we would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Hope. Uh, again, we'll collect all questions and we'll answer them at the end. Uh, so now I'd like to invite our next speaker to talk about the California High Speed Rail Authority Small Business Program that is known to be flexible, attainable, efficient, and credible. Joining us today, today to talk about his experience is Damon Dorn from the High Speed Rail Authority. Damon is the Small Business Outreach Coordinator for California High Speed Rail Authority. Prior to coming to the High Speed Rail Authority in November of 2019, Mr. Dorn worked more than eight years for the Caltrans Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program as both a DBE Certification Analyst and as a statewide small business liaison in the Caltrans Office of Civil Rights. So thank you for joining us today, Damon. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, like the gentleman said, my name is Damon Dorn, and I'll be delivering the High Speed Rail Small Business Overview presentation. Next slide. Yeah, the California High Speed Rail is committed to small businesses playing a major role in the High Speed Rail project. The High Speed Rail Small Business Program has an overall 30% small business participation that includes a 10% DBE and a 3% DVBE participation goal. Next slide. <clears throat> our program objectives. Internally, we want to ensure that all of our contracts have small business language, and we also want to ensure that small businesses are being utilized on authority contracts. 
Um, externally, we want to continue to educate and inform, and inform the public about the High Speed Rail project. We want to act as an advocate to small businesses interested on the project, uh, help you by helping you connect to resources and also promoting your success. Um, as you'll see with the diagram on the side, the small business map, uh, you'll see the current participation numbers that shows the number of certified businesses that have worked on the project as of February 28, 2021. We've had 613 certified small businesses, 195 were certified DBEs or disadvantaged business enterprises, and 68 were certified disabled veteran business enterprises or DBBEs. Uh, we also break down numbers regionally with 215 of those businesses being established in Northern California, 190 in the Central Valley, 191 in Southern California, and we also had 17 certified businesses outside of California. Next slide. Next is the list of certifications recognized by the High Speed Rail. But let me first say that the High Speed Rail is not a certifying agency. However, because we receive both state and, federally fun and federal funding, excuse me, we regularly partner with these as well as other state and local agencies in our small business outreach efforts. Uh, the California Department of General Services, they maintain the small and micro business certification. They also handle the disabled veteran business enterprise certification, as well as the small business for public work certification. Those are all state certifications. On the federal side, we recognize the California Unified Certification Program, also known as the DBE program. And we also recognize the US Small Business Administration's 8A program. Next slide. Our three initial construction packages called CP1, CP23, and CP4 roughly make up the first 119 miles of the high-speed rail project that will stretch between Bakersfield and Merced. Next slide. Each of our current high-speed rail design build partners currently have a small business liaison officer who acts as the point of contact for small businesses interested in their portion of the project. For the construction packages we just mentioned, here are the contact, here is the contact information for the small business liaison officers. Uh, for CP1, Tiana D. Martinpre. For CP23, uh, Bjorn Nelson. And for CP4, Amanda Kraft. Next slide. In addition to our construction partners just mentioned, we also have two professional service partners. Our rail delivery partner, WSP, is a consulting firm who provides program delivery and program management services. And our early train operator, DB Engineering and Consulting, assists with the planning, designing, and implementing the high-speed rail project, which includes providing support on system design, readiness, operation, and maintenance concepts. Uh, based on the services your firms may or may not provide, I would encourage you to contact these individuals and provide them with your company's capability statements if you're interested in doing business with the high-speed rail. Next slide. Connect HSR is the authority's vendor registry. It is a free online registry that provides all businesses with a quick and easy way to get connected to the high-speed rail business opportunities. By registering, you are telling our current HSR prime and potential prime contractors that you're interested in doing business. Essentially, you are describing what your business can do what services you provide or what supplies or equipment you sell, uh, also what counties you work in, and if you are a certified small, disadvantaged, or disabled veteran-owned business. Uh, once registered, firms receive notifications of high-speed rail procurement opportunities and also invitations to business-focused events. Next slide. In addition to our Connect HSR vendor registry, our small business newsletter is a great way to stay connected to the HSR project. Information in the newsletter includes small business profiles, some of the different faces of the high-speed rail, uh, partner spotlights, workforce development and job training programs, and also a calendar of upcoming small business events. Uh, a link to our most recent newsletter can also can always be found on our on our webpage. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next slide. High Speed Rail currently maintains a memorandum of agreement with the California Capital Procurement and Technical Assistance Center, also known as California PTAC, or Capital PTAC, excuse me. Uh, we share both dates and details of organization events. We invite members to attend statewide, regional, or local events. 
Uh, we encourage and support and support, excuse me, joint educational and training programs by promoting conferences, workshops, and webinars amongst our constituents. Capital PTAC helps small businesses prepare, prepare for, pursue, and perform on government contracts. And some of their services include one-on-one -on -one counseling tailored to the needs of the individual business, as well as training workshops and webinars from beginning to advanced level topics. And I also want to point out that all these services are provided at no cost to you, the business. Again, this is a agency that is federally funded. Next slide. Lastly, we want to just encourage you to follow us through our social media platforms. Um, again, all these links will be ma made available to you if you have any questions. If you have any additional questions for me regarding small business program, again, I'll stay on the line to answer any questions during the Q&A session. Next slide. And again, if you have any questions that you would ask, like to ask directly about the program, you can send those emails to HSR small business, excuse me, HSR SB program at hsr.ca.gov. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Damon. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Uh, with that, I'd like to welcome our speakers to turn on your cameras and join us for the Q&A. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just remind you, uh, if you have any questions, you can send them uh, through the chat function. Uh, you can send it over social media on Twitter at CA Climate Invest or through email at info at caclimateinvestments.ca.gov. All right, so uh, I'll start off here. Uh, we received this question from a webinar registrant. What resources or staff are available at CARB to assist with the particular issues for various applicants. Um, in the PowerPoint earlier, uh, as you heard, there are some state resources designed to provide support during the application process. Uh, for example, the SGC runs a technical assistance program that can be very helpful with this type of uh, application support. Uh, reporting requirements and technical assistance uh, availability can really vary by program. So if there's a program you're interested in, um, definitely look into uh, what resources they have available. Uh, Hope or Damon, do you have anything to add about resources for your uh, application process or reporting process? Go ahead, Hope. Um, yeah, so I am actually gonna split this answer with Kyle here, but basically, in terms of applying, like I mentioned in the presentation, that is very district specific. So uh, first step is contacting your local air district and seeing what their process is um, and then going from there. Uh, Kyle, I don't know if you have anything more specific to add. Uh, yeah, I think you, you pretty well covered it, Hope. Uh, uh, something uh, I always like to say about the, the nature of our program for, for Moyer and CAP incentives is that uh, we at CARB kind of set the menu and the districts choose what to order. Uh, so if you have questions about the menu, so to speak, like the requirements and eligibility and things like that, uh, yeah, we'd be more than happy to to help clarify things as best we can. Uh, but as far as specific, a lot of the times our, our answer is necessarily, oh, you got to ask your local air district. Uh, but yeah, the, the email that Hope provided uh, in her part of the presentation is, uh, you know, definitely feel free to drop us a line. Great. Okay. Right. I'll go. Oh, go sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, and in regards to the high speed rail, uh, that's one of the areas where I am not 100% familiar with, but I do have contacts. I consider myself sort of a traffic cop. So although there might not be anything that I'm readily aware of right now, um, I do my coworker who works in the environmental justice department, I can provide her contact information if there are questions regarding those kind of those topics. Uh, my wheelhouse typically revolves around small business, certified businesses, and the like. Great. Thank you, guys. Uh, second question we received uh, is the allotment of funds weighted equally between nonprofit and for profit entities? Uh, again, this varies widely between programs. Um, I don't know if you guys have any specific details on, on your programs in particular. Uh, well, I could speak to cap incentives uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, 
it, the, immediately my response is very much that it, it varies by the air district. Uh, you know, they they get to prioritize their project selection uh, as they see fit based on their local priorities. But uh, one one detail for cap incentives in particular is that since these are uh, sort of community directed funds uh, to a certain extent for the air districts with uh, communities selected to participate in AB 617, uh, those communities have a lot of say so uh, on how projects are prioritized and what kinds of uh, businesses uh, or, or agencies uh, get focus. And uh, broadly speaking, a lot of those communities are very interested in focusing on businesses and uh, uh, groups that operate in those areas. So that that's kind of a, an oblique way to answer the question, but I think it's the best we could do. <laughs> at the carb level. Oh, uh, uh, Hope, did you have anything to add? No, I think you covered it, Kyle. Thanks. Okay. And as far as the high speed rail is concerned, uh, again, in, in regards to small business, uh, we don't typically uh, look for nonprofits, although there are opportunities where nonprofits can participate. Uh, specifically, when we're talking about construction or contracting or procurement opportunities, we typically look for for-profit businesses, specifically looking for certified businesses uh, to utilize on the project. That's our main goal and concern. But again, uh, throughout the agency, throughout the, the project, there are uh, opportunities available um, for any number uh, of different organizations, whether they be for-profit or non-profit. Great. Thank you. Uh, so the next question we received was, how are small trucking companies being helped? Uh, we talked a little bit about HVIP, which is a hybrid vehicle program, incentive program, and it does provide incentives for eligible vehicles. Uh, to check if small trucks would be available for incentives, uh, visit their website. Uh, they have a, a vehicle page to determine what type of incentives are available. Uh, in addition to HFIP, non-California Climate Investments funding is also available, including the Carl Moyer Program and VW Mitigation. Uh, these other opportunities are mentioned in the Clean Trucks and Buses Program webpage for HFIP on our California Climate Investments website. Um, so there are also many potential funding sources, so be sure to check the Funding Finder tool that we mentioned earlier. Um, So let me go to the next question here. Uh, does this cover fueling, charging equipment, and battery storage? Uh, we have a few opportunities here for that. Uh, under the AHSC program, the Affordable Housing Sustainable Community Program, which is currently accepting applications for the funding cycle, uh, EV charging infrastructure is an eligible cost. All charging infrastructure must be open network or used for transit vehicles. Uh, solar PV systems are also eligible costs and may be used to offset electricity for vehicle charging. Uh, there are also many other non-CCI opportunities available through cities and utilities for funds for charging infrastructure. Uh, be sure to check the funding wizard that we mentioned for opportunities in your area. Uh, one example is the city of Lodi is currently offering electric vehicle charging rebates from $500 to $3,000. Uh, SMUD is also oppor offering opportunities for uh, business customers uh, who may be eligible for electric vehicle charging installation incentives ranging from $1,500 for each level two EV charger port up to $80,000 per DC fast charger. Uh, we got a live question for Damon. Uh, on high-speed rail, we are a small business looking to expand into Fresno. We are purchasing a piece of land that has the bullet train access to two acres of this property. We have been told that this section of the rail is being discontinued. Can we apply to funding to purchase this rail easement back? Uh, that's a that's a good question, and I'm going to be honest. I I wouldn't be able to speak on whether or not the purchase would be to your benefit or not. Um, usually I, what, our, what we do here, especially in the small business program, 
we rely a lot on our design build partners. So any of the contracts and procurements that are available will come directly through the prime contractors. As far as land acquisitions, uh, I would recommend that you speak to someone in our right of way office. They might be able to provide you with a more direct answer on whether or not that would be to your benefit to purchase the land or not. Um, that's something that I really wouldn't be able to speak on right now. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question we received, I am a hydroponic farmer. We grow several varieties of lettuce, tomatoes, herbs, and microgreens uh, in Riverside. Uh, we can't keep up with the demand. The appeal has been it's local and clean farming. Um, we use less water to grow similar crops in soil. Um, our only barrier to expanding is funding. Are we potentially eligible for funding under these programs? Uh, you could look into the farmer program, which we mentioned, and the community air protecting incentives program has funding available through air districts for low emission and zero emission equipment. And uh, we would recommend you contact your local air district for opportunities. Uh, you could also look into the healthy soils program, which doesn't currently have funding, but it may in the next round of funding. So we did encourage you to visit CDFA's website on healthy soils. Uh, Hope or Kyle, is there anything you wanted to add to that one? Yeah, I, I don't, well, you know what, there, there is, a, a, at risk of maybe getting a little too in the weeds about cap incentives, uh, there, there might be some, some potential opportunities for uh, community identified projects that, that intersect with hydroponics in some way. Um, uh, basically for the community selected to participate in the program, uh, the communities themselves in conjunction with their districts can come up with new kinds of incentives uh, that can meet whatever needs that that community has. So if, if hydroponics is, I guess you could say, on the radar of some of these selected communities, there there might be some potential there. Like I said, that may be a little too in the weeds to be helpful, uh, but might be worth looking into locally. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, is there a list of awarded projects so we can get an example of the type of projects that get funded? Uh, again, this varies vastly by program, but in general, um, all grants and loans are posted uh, to the program webpage. So if you go, if you're interested in you know, organics grants, you could go there and see a list of projects that have um, made the cut and got funding um, and there's generally descriptions and uh, a lot of times there's scores as well so you could reach out to um, some of the program staff um, and talk to them about what made it a good uh, project um hope kyle or damon any other thoughts on what they can do to see a winning application well yeah that's another one of those Another one of those situations where my answer is essentially it's going to vary from district to district, and it can even vary uh, from year to year as districts' priorities shift. Um, you definitely want to contact your local air district, uh, and and even if you've contacted them previously, the answer you get this year may be different than last year. So it's definitely worth uh, checking regularly with them. Yeah, I was just going to add to that, since the spending of cap incentives is really focused on uh, what the community wants and needs, it's really helpful to even just provide your input to your local air district and uh, work with them. Um, and they can give you a better idea of how the funds are being spent and what their priorities are. And in regards to the high speed rail, again, I would uh, refer back to the slides that I shared. Our small business liaisons, although we, the authority, are uh, in charge of the high speed rail project, we rely a lot on our design build partners, uh, the prime contractors that we highlighted in our slides. Uh, they are more or less responsible for the contracts and opportunities that may come out uh, regarding their portion of the project um, in order to find out about any general uh, information regarding the high speed rail, regarding opportunities, then I would again uh, suggest using the Connect HR vendor registry. Uh, you'll stay in the loop um, as far as any potential or upcoming procurements that might be available. And you'll also stay in the loop with our newsletters as well as any other information coming out of the High Speed Rail Authority regarding the project and when funds are available. Great. Thank you. 
we have a question. Is there assistance for Spanish speaking applicants? Yes, in many cases, uh, many programs offer assistance directly to Spanish speaking applicants. Uh, we do have a dedicated hotline for California Climate Investments that's operated in Spanish and English. Uh, the number of that hotline is 1-800-757-2907. Uh, this information is also available on our website at caclimateinvestments.ca.gov. Can a technology that crosses funding agencies be funded by multiple agencies? Um, that is definitely a possibility. It, again, it depends on the program, but uh, we have seen cases where um, parts of projects are funded by different, um, for example, our, our, our dairy digester program funds a lot of dairy digesters, uh, but the fueling infrastructure to clean up that fuel is funded through some of our fuels uh, programs to uh, clean up the fuel and make it readily available for um, trucks or, or, or natural gas vehicles. So that's just one example and uh, there's there's quite a few that have happened. Um, let me see here. Is there funding for wildfire and property fire prevention and containment research for private companies? Uh, Yes, CAL FIRE offers fire prevention grants, but not in the procedural guidelines. It states that private for-profit companies are not eligible to apply. This latest grant application solicitation will close in one week on Wednesday, May 19th at 3 o'clock. Um, for future funding, you can access more information through the CSAT website, or you can contact the fire prevention grants team at fpgrants at fire.ca.gov. So I think that is all the time we have now for Q&A. Thank you everyone for helping me out with those questions and thank you for sending in the questions. Um, we, we have a couple more slides we'd like to share with you and then we will wrap up the webinar. Uh, so thank you. Uh, we have a, a few additional resources here that we wanted to mention that are available to businesses ranging from federal uh, to state funding. Uh, we don't have time to cover all these today, but we'd highly encourage you to explore some of these avenues. Next slide, please. The State Reserve. Uh, additionally, we wanted to notify you all about this year's State Reserve opportunity, which Hope briefly touched on, which supports acting early to deploy zero emission buses. The State Reserve is a subset of the Carl Moyer Air Quality Standards Attainment Program. CARB determines that the project type that the State Reserve funds will be dedicated to for the given fiscal year. Uh, fiscal year 2020 through 2021 being for infrastructure supporting zero emission vehicles. Eligible projects are battery charging stations and hydrogen fueling stations. Air districts apply for state reserve funds annually, and then they are granted an award to fund eligible projects within their district. Interested applicants must apply directly to air districts. Please contact your local air district for more information. Uh, so again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, just a quick reminder, all or most of this information talked about today can be found on the California Climate Investments website. These webinars are recorded and will be posted on the CCI website for those who want to see them again or did not have a chance to participate. Uh, follow CCI on social media at CA Climate Invest to get all the latest news and updates. And we'd like to invite you to give us feedback on your experience during this webinar. These webinars are created out of an effort to streamline information for potential applicants. And we are eager to hear your thoughts on what went well and what could benefit from further improvement. There's a short survey following the end of the webinar and we hope that you will take the time to participate. Those who submit a response will automatically be entered in a drawing to win a $25 Visa gift card. Uh, thank you once again for the speakers who joined us today, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon.